Yeah, that's right. Welcome in, welcome back, folks, to a ND Nation domination. Welcome to the official beginning of the Marcus Freeman era. Always Irish show. Thanks for being here, folks. Listen, this one's going to be off the rails. I admit it, it's going to be off the rails. Woke up in South Bend, threw everything in the car, drove as fast as I could, walked in the door. Now I'm in the basement recording. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. All right? So we're going to go through this, and we're going to soak this one up, and we're going to soak it in because, quite frankly, we do not have these opportunities often. So when we do, we're going to embrace them. All right? So let's do this. Let's do this. On YouTube, obviously, hit subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps me as well. Notifications on. You'll be alerted every time Marcus Freeman dominates an undefeated team. Twitter, search bar. Oh. <laughs> I'm in such a good mood. I'm not used to this, you guys. I'm just not used to doing a show in this mood. Give me a little slack. Twitter, search bar, always Irish rat. Always Irish Shake. Emails always Irish at gmail.com. Audio only anywhere you want me. You can get me. Call in line's gonna be popping this week. 312 988 Give me a call all this week and tell me what your favorite part of watching Notre Dame absolutely dominate and humiliate Clemson was. All week, give me a call. Fighting Irish Wire, stay tuned. I got to get this done. Then I'm going to write some stuff and we'll get that off to the races too. Shepkowski, everybody else, they have things up. Go to Fighting Irish Wire. Check it out, right? So let's get into this. What a pleasant surprise that was, wasn't it, folks? In year one, with a very limited offensive roster, Marcus Freeman has a more impressive win than any Brian Kelly ever had at Notre Dame 11 years. 11 years. And that's relevant to mention, given that Brian Kelly himself had a really good win last night. And I understand that. And he, he is to deserve credit for that win last night, even though it is a, one of the weaker Alabama teams there's been in a long time. But good for him that he got that win. Not really, but I'm just in a good mood, so I'll give it to him. I don't mean it. I'm just trying to be nice because I'm in a damn good mood. But this was the game we begged Kelly for for 11 years and never got. Begged for and never got a game this complete, start to finish in all three phases. That This was it. This was that game we all envisioned against a really good team. And we're not favored. And we go in there and play good and beat them. And dominate. And play good start to finish. And win all three phases without doubt. That's the game we begged for. Never got it in 11 years. Never. And you got it this year, nine games in. Even Kelly's top win, as far as impressiveness, to me, is 2012 Oklahoma. This was complete domination, way better than that performance. Way better than that performance. This was complete domination of an undefeated top four team with championship pedigree and a championship head coach. Prove it. You dominated them. Absolutely dominated them in every part of the game. Coaching, execution, planning, adjust. What Notre Dame kicked the crap out of them. All night, all night, all night. Now, here's the best part of this, too. The best part of this is it's only going to get better as the talent does. If Marcus got this high level of efficiency performance out of all three phases with this group, what's going to come in a few years when he has a five-star talent quarterback, six deer wide receivers jumping and running all over? That is the, by far, the best part of this entire discussion is that fact. This is just the beginning. This is not the peak. If Freeman's capable of getting those guys to play this way now, what is it going to be like in two or three years when that roster flips? 
That is my favorite part of all this. There is winning, and then there's total domination in all phases. It just hits different. It signals something different. Listen, I'm happy for everybody. Freeman, Pine, Tommy, uh, us, the 60-something recruits there. Lovely, by the way. Good timing on that one for once. Beautiful. All right? Like, it's different when you do what we did. Like, if you sneak by, get some breaks, win on a field goal, but you play kind of iffy at times, we would still be happy. South Bend still would have been rocking last night. I still would have been drinking what I was drinking. But the domination part of this is very different. Like, us beating an undefeated top five team is already rare. Domination, though. Domination, that's different. It hits different. It signals different when it's absolute physical domination, which is what this was all night. First things first, thank you to everybody I met up with. Some of you saw on Twitter, my brother and his wife were in town from Florida. We did the gender reveal for their baby in between Touchdown Jesus in the stadium and the quad Friday afternoon. I met a ton of friends, came by the Airbnb, or I met up with all of you. Love you. It was just great. It was a great weekend. For for the Kennedys, it does not get any better than this weekend. Family-wise, football-wise, friend-wise, we had it all covered, all right? So that's the first thing. Thanks to everybody I met up with. It's beautiful that we have these friendships. Along those lines, I do have to say this. The Clemson people were very nice. Um, I did not see all weekend at the bars, you know, out on Eddy Street, on campus, at the game, game day, all of that. I never once saw a problem with Clemson people at all. Not to me or anybody else. I did not see. I'm sure there's stuff that happens everywhere. I didn't see anything all weekend. I saw no issues, everybody being polite, everybody being respectful to each other all weekend. That was my experience. I had no issues. I didn't see anybody who had issues. Um, Here's what else I'll say. Friday, you're walking around. Saturday before the game, orange, it felt like everywhere. And it had you think of what's this crowd split going to look like Saturday. Once we got in the stadium, it really wasn't that bad. It wasn't. I think that bright orange sticks out to people. And it's more obvious when you see them out about. But when we got in there, they had their corner, the visitor's allotment corner section, which was all orange. Other than that, there were just specks of like two guys who have tickets here for there. It was no big takeover. It it was not. And so I want to say that. Being in there, getting my eyes on it, it was not a big takeover. Nothing like Georgia, nothing like Cincinnati. And the other thing is you got to realize, Notre Dame is a bucket list destination place for a lot of these fan bases. And every group of Clemson people I talk to, you know how I am. Get me a few Miller lights in me and I get chatty. I'm already chatty. All those people said we wanted to come in 20. But COVID canceled it. And so this was their next chance. So the Clemson people that were there really wanted to be there. They wanted to experience Notre Dame. They regretted that. But in theory, it made sense at the time. They were silent all night. Anybody not at the game, I'm telling you, they were silent all night. They literally had nothing to cheer for all night. Literally. They did not do anything good. Like, Even when they scored their first touchdown, nobody even cheered for Clemson because you're down 28-7 in mid in the fourth quarter. Who cares? You're dead anyways. It was a thing of beauty. It was a thing of beauty. They were silent all night. After the first kick, I never heard a peep out of any of the Clemson people. 28 nothing happened, and they hit the exits. Everywhere you looked, you saw a sea of orange going down. Beep, beep. Beep, beep, toodaloo, see ya. They were out. They were out. It was Rudy's dad. It was the most beautiful sight these eyes have ever seen. All those Clemson people leaving early. And a lot of them were leaving cold and miserable. 
Miserable football and miserable is one thing. They were cold too. It was beautiful. Love everything about it. They were respectful though. I didn't have any issues. But seeing them all leave with their heads down in silence for somebody like me, that, that means the world to me. Total domination. You didn't just beat them, play good at home. No, you dominated this team all freaking night. When I did my show last week, I, I did a show on this, and then I did an article on it for Irish Wire, and I said, for Notre Dame to win this game, here are the five things they're going to need to do. I can't believe I'm saying this. They literally did every single one of those five things and then some. And they did every single one of those five things beautifully, like A grades for every unit. It was unbelievable. This complete performance from a Notre Dame team is what we've all been begging for. And against a good team. Yes, under Kelly, Notre Dame dominated some teams. Good teams. That's the difference. We begged for this forever. And it almost felt like we're just never going to see it. This was it. They were good in all phases all night. Ready to play. Big plays. Everything. Steel possessions. Steel scores. Check. Check. Limit their run game. Check. Big special teams play. Check. Check. You, not needing Pine with his arm to win the game, but having him just have to make a couple throws. Check. Did that. O-line you. You earned it for once. I give O-line you a hard time when uh, it's always O-line you pushing around nobodies. This was different. This was O-line you against an undefeated top four team. You earned it that. You earned it last night. Good job. And number five on my list was do something early to keep the fans engaged. Well, a pump block return for a touchdown is a great way to start that in the first quarter. This was a complete team effort. All of those things, they did all of them. I just, I'm not used to it. I am not used to it. They checked every single box they had to do to win this game. And because they did them all, they blew them out. They blew them out. And the aftermath was different than if this would have been Kelly. If it would have been Kelly, yeah, everybody still would have been thrilled. Marcus Freeman's a man of the Notre Dame people, though. In a way, Brian Kelly wasn't because he didn't want to be. He is a man of the Irish people. And we're happy for him as a person. Like, it's just a different relationship this fan base has with Marcus Freeman than Kelly would ever allow them to have with him. And he could be great at LSU and, and off to a hot start and then uh, whatever. But that didn't happen here. So even Kelly's big night he had last night, fine. But he was never going to do that here. Marcus Freeman's a man of us. He wants to be a man of the people. That's why he stayed out on the field. That's why he came out of the coach's locker room to the tunnel to see the fans. He's a man of the people, and it just hits different. It just hits you different because of that personality and that relationship we have with him. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you next. Here's where this all switched in my mind. Going into half. The cheap shot they took on us, the little scuffle. And then, and then they separate it, and we go into the tunnel for the locker room. I was on the opposite end zone, so I could see right in that tunnel. Our guys, all I saw was the gold domes bouncing in that tunnel and then turning into the locker room. Our guys were jacked up. I, all I saw was the shadow of the gold bouncing, every single guy jumping. And that was the switch for me. I think that was the Freeman era turning on. That was the switch. That was the moment. It, it was just like new mode activated. Um, 
I knew in that moment when I saw them bouncing into the locker room, there's no way we're losing this game, and I'm 100% sure of it. Like, there's no comeback. There's none of this. No. And I honestly felt confident saying it. Like, no. There's no way they're going to have a letdown in the second half. And I just feel like that was the mental flip, like the switch, the flip to get us into this mode of like, you are good and you can dominate. And that, and I just felt like that was really it. Like just turning the on switch on the Freeman air in that moment, seeing those guys bouncing in that, into that locker room. I knew that we're not losing this game. This is different. This is something different. God, it was so beautiful. So beautiful. So Let's, I'm going to break down the game a little bit here, just off my mind, just coming in here blind. Let's start here. Unique place to start. Marcus Freeman might be mad at me because I'm going to have to share my love that I have for him with Brian Mason as well. I'm in love with Brian Mason. Six pump blocks this year. Yeah, ridiculous. Ridiculous. And to do what, to do it again in this moment and run it into score. It was exactly what every Notre Dame fan said. We need something like that to, to help us get momentum in this game. You got it. I love that guy. I love how he has them playing. I love that he values special teams being a plus unit in Notre Dame. I love all of it. I love his energy. I love all of it. I'm in love with that guy. We've all been begging for good special teams in Notre Dame. This guy's unbelievable. He has those guys buying in and playing out of their heads. It's amazing. Offense. Let's start here. O-line you, you earned it. You earned it. I give them a hard time, and I give Notre Dame fans a hard time, saying O-line you all the time, and then we play a good team and run it for 46 yards. I always complain about that, and I say, how can you be O-line you and then in your best games, you don't run the ball at all. And you're O-line you. That never added up to me. Terrific job. Clemson was giving up 88 yards rushing a game. You got 263 on him with Estime and Diggs, both well over 100. This meant everything. That enabled Notre Dame to dictate the pace of this ball game, start to finish all night. And it was gorgeous. It was a thing of beauty. It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Pine, a robust 9 of 17, 85 yards, one touching, uh, uh, passing touchdown, one running uh, touchdown. It was my exact plan for Pine to, for us to win this game. He doesn't have to do too much because the running game works. Don't make mistakes. And when he has to hit a big throw, hit a few. He did it. He did it. And I loved the runs for him, too. Those are a little different. And I love the runs for him, especially the one with Mayer as the lead blocker. Love it. Love it. Just a great, great job. The plan for Pine to be successful in this ballgame was followed exactly. Be able to run the ball. You got Mayer to throw to as your outlet. Don't make Pine do it with his arm. But, but that meant you had to run the ball. Successfully did it all night. Did it all night. 263. Folks, that's big boy ball. Great job. Absolutely great job. Uh, and then Mayer, the, the TD, the record, the key block on Pines Run. Beautiful. So the game plan and the execution were both terrific last night. They followed our path to victory perfectly, and I am not used to it. Every single bullet point of what it would take for Notre Dame to win this game. They did it. And not only did they do it, they did it freaking great. It was a complete, full, high-level football game by Notre Dame. Kelly had me thinking it wasn't possible. Like, that's the issue. You got a guy there so long, and you see the results for so long that are the same. You almost think that it's just not feasible. Year one, Marcus showed you it's, it's possible to put it all together and play a great game and dominate a really good team. Now, Clemson has issues. Like, that's a part of this. Clemson has issues. Clemson looked 
how Notre Dame looks in a lot of big games. They have their issues, especially offensively. Un- unimaginative, boring. Will Shipley's got to be sore today. But boring. Uh, uh, DJ, you, uh, we have problems with the passing game. He was all over, throwing it deep. like, And then defensively, if you can't stop the run, you're dead. They couldn't stop the run, and they're dead. <laughs> Beautiful. Freaking love it. Beautiful. Um, what did they have? 90 yards rushing. Shipley's got to be sore. I, I mean, they controlled the quarterbacks. Yet, Batello, Kali, Morrison. I, Morrison, so young. He played so great. And he's so young. It's, it's the best part of that. You're going to have that guy for a long time. And he balled out and clown Clemson all night last night. And he ain't even 20 yet. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you got these youngsters making plays, game-changing takeaways, smothering run defense. We got a little pressure at times. Uh, It was a full, well-rounded, acceptable, great performance. I don't think I've ever said that doing always Irish. Because even if we've blown out teams, they're crappy teams. So it doesn't have the same juice and carry this carries. I don't think I've ever done a show and felt this good about the way Notre Dame played. Ever. In the six, seven years I've done this. It was a complete ass whooping. Just like Dabo said. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. It, it's, it's four quarters of domination. I couldn't believe it. I, uh, I'm hopeful that this clicks and that, that vibe that I, that halftime, they leaned over to my brother and I said, you see them guys bouncing in that locker room. I said, the Freeman era switch is now flipped to on. That is a, how do I say it? it? Everybody was just so excited. All you do is jump. Like, the guys just couldn't sit still. They were so excited. It's it's everything the feel of Notre Dame football should be last night. It felt like everything Notre Dame football should feel like all the time, or at least more often. It was a masterpiece, masterclass. Out-schemed, out-coached, out-executed domination all the way in a way we could only dream of, dream of for the last 25 years. Unbelievably terrific performance. And I don't, I realize Clemson has issues, but they were undefeated, ranked fourth. I know they have a good head coach. I know they have some good talent. Like, I'm not letting that take away from this shine. And And it's, it would be a little different if, if we played iffy and won on a, a, a lucky kick at the end, whatever. The domination part of this is the most intriguing to me because of all the outcomes of this game. I had Notre Dame winning in my USA Today picks. Not like this. Not like this. And so to know that this team, even with its limitations, is capable of this, That tells you how much room there is on the upside of this. On the upside, let some of that talent get a little better in in key areas. If you're able to do this with this group, the future's bright. And all those recruits all around the field, there was people before the game. There wasn't one piece of of land that didn't have recruits in their families. All right, just beautiful. Just beautiful. People everywhere. Beautiful. It was a master class in domination. Um, And so I I just, this is what we've been begging for. And it's just the beginning. I feel like that switch is flipped on and now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Uh, So I'm sorry if I'm missing anything. I literally was just so excited. The minute I walked in the door, I ran ran down here and I had to start talking to you. I'm just too excited not to. 
if there's anything I missed, let me know. Um, but I think this is the beginning of the Freeman era. I this is that switch. This is that extra level. You just were never going to get under Kelly, whether it was energy, vibe, whatever it was. We never got it. And we saw it last night. Wait till you got better talent. So I'll end with this. I can't wait to hear from all the people that told me Freeman was a fraud. And they were sure of it. In over his head. Big talker, but can't get any good play. Okay, good recruiter, not a good ad guy. Losing control, okay? Where are all those people? I want to hear from you. Are you still bailing on Freeman? You all said it in my chats, in my direct messages on Twitter, in my emails. Defensive coordinator, not ad coach, John, and I already know it. I've seen enough. Where are you at now? Where are you at now? Most impressive Notre Dame win in like 20-something years. You still out on Freeman? Or are you interested now? Just wondering. We'll talk to you soon. I'll see you on the call-in show tomorrow. And you know I got some other stuff I'm going to work on the rest of the day to put out. Embrace this, everybody. We waited a long time for this. And the fact that it's happening with Marcus means a lot to me. Marcus is a man of the Notre Dame people. And last night was a special moment of bonding between all of us and him. I'm happy for him. I'm thrilled for him. Brighter days are ahead. And this was a bright one. There's brighter ones coming. Great job for everybody involved. We all needed this. I'll talk to you.